What's going on everyone? I meant to get this episode out to you guys yesterday. Things just got a little busy and hectic, but we're back at it today. Today is now November 6th and I know what you guys are thinking. Obi, why are we talking about NVIDIA Robo Taxis and X-Pong on a day when most of us are Neo Bull? And that's exactly why we need to talk about it because if you're invested in Neo, you're not just betting on a company. You're betting on an autonomous driving future, Chinese innovation, and the entire uh, mobility industry being rebuilt right now in front of our faces and this week literally this week the landscape shaped um, in ways that made Neo even have to pay attention so buckle up because we're diving into three major developments that paint a picture of where this company where this industry is headed and what it means for the company that we care about mostly let's start with the elephant in the room Jensen Huang just declared that the tipping point for robo taxis has arrived not coming, not soon, but has arrived. At NVIDIA's GTC conference, Jensen didn't just make bold claims. He backed them up with hardware and partnerships that should make everyone sit up and take notice. They launched their Drive AGX Hyperion 10 platform, and the specs are frankly ridiculous. Over 2,000 tops of computing power, that's nearly eight times of the previous orange. Now for my Neo family, let me remind you guys of something. Remember Neo Day 2021? The ET7 was announced as the first mass produced vehicle with orange chips, four of them, totaling over 1,000 tops. At the time, that was groundbreaking. The industry said it would be a milestone, and for a minute, it was. But here's what's fascinating. NVIDIA's automotive revenue is still 1.25% of their total revenue. Even with the 69% year over year increase, they only pulled in 586 million last year from automotive. But they're projecting 5 billion this year, more than the past five years combined. So clearly they're shifting in strategy. And this is where it gets interesting for us as Neo investors. NVIDIA and Uber just announced that they're deploying approximately 100,000 and robo taxis starting in 2027. 100,000 guys. They're targeting a 750 billion market by 2030. That's about 5.35 trillion rent. And here's what most people are missing. Look at who Nvidia partnered with. Stellantis is supplying at least 5,000 robo taxis starting in 2026. Lucid is integrating level four into their next generation passenger vehicles. Mercedes-Benz has a level four fleet going operational this year with NVIDIA. So do you guys notice anyone missing from that list? Chinese automakers are conspicuously absent from NVIDIA's big American robo-taxi play. And that's not an accident. That's the market fragmenting along technological and geopolitical lines. Now, NEO has been developing its own full stack autonomous driving solution. They've invested heavily in NAD, NEO Autonomous Driving. They're building their own compute capabilities and they're not dependent on being in NVIDIA's ecosystem for their level four ambitions. Is that a weakness or strength? I'd argue in the long run, it's a strength and it's only a strength if they can execute. That seems to be always the question. Now let's talk about what happened basically simultaneously. x 2025 AI Day. And honestly, this is where things get really spicy for Neo investors. He Xiaoping, x CEO, just announced that x is launching three dedicated robo-taxi models in 2026 with trial operations starting. These aren't concept cars. These are production intent vehicles with 3,000 tops of computing power from four of their in-house Turing AI chips. Let me repeat that, 3,000 tops from chips they've developed themselves. That's more computing power than Nvidia's new platform and its homegrown Chinese technology. But wait, there's more. Xpong is also introducing a higher spec robo trims for their existing models next year with level four capabilities. So they're playing both sides, dedicated robo taxis and consumer vehicles with robo-taxi level autonomy. Sound familiar, right? Kind of sounds like Tesla. They're partnering with GaudMap, a map for short, as their first ecosystem partner. They're opening their SDK to global developers. They're building an entire robo-taxi ecosystem from literally the ground up. And here's the kicker, these systems don't rely on high definition maps. They're using second gen VLA models that can adapt across global traffic patterns, enabling cross city and even cross border deployment. So let's address what everyone is thinking. 
Obi, it sounds like X Pong is eating our lunch. Look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. X Pong is making some pretty aggressive moves. They've got computing power, they've got specs, they've got timeline, they've also got partnerships, and they're moving fast. At 3,000 tops number using their own chips, that's legitimately impressive. But here's what I want you guys to consider there's different strategies for different strengths. Neo has always been about the bigger picture, about battery as a service, about building an ecosystem around the user experience. Their autonomous driving strategy has been about integrating it into the premium ownership model not necessarily about being first to robo taxi but about making autonomy is a seamless part of the neo lifestyle x pong on the other hand is going hard on tech specs and robo taxi commercialization that's their lane they're the tech forward aggressive deployment company and honestly the market needs that competition because it pushes everyone forward what concerns me is what should concern any investor it's the pace of development we need to see neo's nad progress more visibly we need clearer timelines on their level four capability we need to know how they're positioning themselves now not just against X Pong, but against this um, global robo taxi market, a market with a movement that Nvidia seems to be orchestrating. And as we said earlier in the episode, Jensen is very bullish on. Here's what the announcements this week really tell us that the mobility market is bifurcating. On one side, you've got Nvidia building a Western centric platform based ecosystem with Uber as their deployment vehicle and traditional automakers as manufacturing partners. On the other side, you've got companies, Chinese companies like Xpong building vertically integrated solutions with their own chips, their own AI models, and their own ecosystem partnerships within China. Neo sits in an interesting middle ground. They're premium, they're user focused, they're building proprietary technology, but they're not moving as aggressively into the robo taxi space as Xpong. So is that okay? Maybe. The robo taxi market and the premium EV market aren't necessarily the same customer, but they share the same underlying technology whoever masters level 4 autonomous driving has a massive competitive advantage across both markets so here's my take as a neo bull um, who also tries to stay objective earlier this week was a wake-up call the robo taxi tipping point that Jensen Hong talked about it's real the timelines are accelerating 2026 and 2027 aren't some distant future they're next year and the year after x pong throwing down 3,000 tops and three robo taxi models shows that chinese ev makers can compete at the highest technological levels without relying on nvidia's ecosystem that's actually bullish for the chinese ev sector overall but for NEO specifically, the pressure is on. We need to see more concrete autonomous driving milestones. We need clearer communication about their level four strategy. We need to understand how they're positioning in a market where competitors are making very public, very aggressive moves. I'm still bullish on NEO because I believe in their long-term value, their premium positioning, and of course their ecosystem approach. But I'm also realistic that they need to show us the autonomous driving goods uh, sooner rather than later. The robo taxi future is being built right now in real time with real deployments coming in the next 12 to 24 months. Neo needs to be a part of that conversation, not watching from the sideline. That's it for today's episode, Quartzai family. Let me know what you guys think about X Pong's moves. Let me know what you think about Nvidia's strategy as well. Let me know about what you think about Neo um, not really making uh, as many visible advancements visible. And I mean, they could be completely working on this and they probably are but they're not talking about it or broadcasting it as much as some of the other players in this space if you found this episode useful insightful helpful at the very least entertaining hit the like button hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below click the notification bell icon um, and share the video all that stuff really does go a long way in helping out the channel this has been obi with the courtside financial podcast and we'll see you guys in the next episode thanks for watching have a good thursday evening